Uh, call signs Madras, zero one. Roger. I don't know if you read the uh, SOP recently, what I've added, that um, although you use this fuel planner um, for the black block, black box sim, the required trim for takeoff, you actually remove one degree from that, is what you put. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. I work, it Basically, I've found that if I put it at what it tells me, I get airborne, and as soon as I put the gear up, it pitches up quite a bit. And you have to yeah. fight. You have to fight it to stop it yeah. doing until the gears finish moving. Um, but I found that removing one degree from that, and then do you use takeoff performance calculator for the flex temp? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. When you do that, you need to remove ten, because what I found is the performance is too marginal. Um, so yeah. if you remove ten off the flex temperature, you're effectively giving it ten degrees um, better performance. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, I've done that purely through doing a few flights and realizing. Yeah, that's yeah, that's good.
probably carrying a bit more fuel than I need. But it's what they do in real <laughs> life. They go out with quite a yeah. bit. They go out with about 80 yeah. ton. So that's the standard. For the Tanzer's is loaded it? with around 80 ton. Is it? Bloody yeah. yeah. Well, that's the one that's going to scramble, go to Scotland and mm. fuel fuel fighters. And yeah. God knows how long it's going to be there. So 80 tons. I mean, that's enough yeah. for a quite a bit of a route as well if they were doing a route it and is, the aircraft's empty. So, But yeah. it's, they don't refuel high. So. No, exactly. All right, starting up. Control test, and I'm ready for taxi. Back and sack. Okay. Continue in taxi. Oh, I can start the program now, can't I? Yeah. Oh, no error. <laughs> Good. <laughs> What's it detecting then? What is it detecting per second? What's that? Is that just going to tell uh, me? Yeah, there's a bit of debugging in there, which was oh, for okay. my purpose. So you've got the capacity yeah. cap is the capacity in US gallons of the left main. Just the left main? Yeah, because oh, the okay. left and the right are the same. Right. Um, the next one, I think, is the percentage per second yeah 
and then after that because the way fsx works that percentage is is not 100 percent. it's not stored as 100 percent for 100 percent. it's stored as a um like an 8-bit number an 8-bit mm. number so it's actually 8338808 is 100 percent. believe it or not so i then okay. have to work out i have to work out the from the left hand and right hand hoodoos, the hose drum units, mm. 7.5 US gallons per second, mm. which is how much of a percentage of the left tank that I'm going to squirt in every se or take away every second. Right. And then that's the number that I have to subtract from the percentage of the left hand tank it gets really complicated with fsx yeah. there's no bloody there's no bloody need for it to be but they've made it complicated so that's why i had those debugs there just so i could could be sure i was making the right mathematic um calculations okay so they'll disappear when we got it all debugged and working properly i'll take those out okay and make the make the screen a little bit shorter it's the same on the uh, receiver. I've got some debugs there. Mm -hmm. You have one yet? Oh yeah, I've got you in mind. Oh yeah. 70 yeah. miles. What are you going to do? Follow me up? I'm just going to... Yeovilton, but yeah, if you get airborne, I'll... Uh... Oh, good. Yeah. Yeovilton... VLN? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Good point. Because that's, uh, that's basically centre and underneath. Yeah, yeah. Just caution with your altitude. Uh, I'm going to be f climbing for two zero zero for tanker. Okay. Should be there before you anyway. Well, maybe the same time, depending on how fast you're going. But no, yeah, just knowing you, you're just, like basically a helicopter. I'm just, yeah. <laughs> it's helicopters overtaking me. Ah. Uh, no, I was. Yeah, I'm just trying to burn off a bit of fuel. This hasn't got a dump. Has this got a fuel dump? Uh, not a gauge as such. If you open shift four, there's a dump button there. Oh, it's there. Okay. Yeah. I'm rolling anyway. I've taken off uh, lighter than this for some of the tasks I've done. <laughs> You don't often get above 200 odd, do you? Even in real world, we don't fly enough packs anywhere anymore. Maybe Calgary. Yeah. Calgary you might get a heavier. That's about the furthest we fly from Rise at the minute. Even the Cypress doesn't get that heavy. It's usually like full of packs, but... Yeah. But weight wise they're not op packs, it's usually holiday packs, so they're uh, yeah. Yeah. they're not carrying too many bags.
think on this uh, this version they've overdone themselves on the old wing flex and it causes issues. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite a bit of wing flex there, isn't it? Yeah. One sec. Channel created. Channel switched.
User joined your channel. Madras 1, this is Razor 4, request fueling. Razor 4, Madras 1, request knowledge. My course 245, my level 200, your level 190. Confirm, on, uh, confirm wind visual, how much fuel do you require? Confirm wind visual and 2,000 pounds. Razor 4. 2,000 pounds for uh, Razor 4. Uh, raise four Madras and one. Go ahead. Uh, you can be able to do three joints, two thousand pounds each time. It'll be on a different mode each time. If I'm.
Rosa Forma Duras 1, course correction 250. Two five zero. Razor for Madras one for information we have a fifty knot uh, headwind on the, on this leg. Uh, so this will be a long the uh, the long leg. Third leg will be short. Yep, walk up. Drasman's course correction, uh, new course, 160. 4 is visual. Razor 4, Madras 1, copy visual, clear join left ops. Clear left ops. Razor 4 is still visual, uh, just dropped a whole load of speed off there. Roger, uh, Razor 4 Madras 1, course correction left now. Uh, new course is 070. 070. Raise the form address when we have you on the cam camera, clear a stern right. Clear a stern right, we'll raise a form.
Ready to form address on clear contact. Right. Report contact. Okay. Clear contact, right. Course correction zero six five. Zero six five. Turn two minutes thirty seconds. Roger. Contact. Passing fuel. Close positive. Razor 4, fuel complete, close valves, disconnect, in this scan. Roger, disconnect. Yeah, that was the same time as mine, within a couple of seconds. Yeah, that'll just be the difference between me telling you I'm pressing the button and, yep. and that. Yeah, that's not bad, not bad at all. Razor floor, go reform. Reform, right. Confirm 2000. Yeah. 2010, in fact. Yeah, that's what mine says. Yeah, excellent. Uh, left now, new course. 335. 335. Razor 4, have you a stern still? Uh, I'm going to move you to the the left hose. Report fuel required and a stern left. Uh, 2,000 pounds. I'm going to try filling the external tanks. Roger, 2,000. Um, I'll call when it's done. The distance you were getting looked good towards the end as well. Yeah. Yeah, I lost a lot of energy there. Yeah. I want to get it, get it back, but... I want, um, I'm looking at plan G distance, really, because that's all I've got to go off. I like, yeah. if we're doing it this way, I want people to be within point 0.1, because point 0.1 oh, is still yeah. a little yeah. way. I mean, where you are now, you're only point 0.5 now, so you're a fifth of that, which is still quite a distance. Yeah, it's still too far to drop back actually. Yeah, so I mean, I'm going to allow point 0.1 for yeah. player to player refuels, I think. Yeah, plus, plus with this gauge you have to take your eye off the ball and type in what you want. It's quicker than that other thing we were yeah, using. Yeah, exactly. Right? And a stern. Um, Razor 4, clear contact, 
right, we have a turn in uh, 30 seconds. Sorry, clear contact left. Yep, clear contact. See, I'll tell you when you're point one on my screen. Point two still on mine. Still just outside, still point two. Right, there, there's point, that's the edge of point one. So I, I think I'll accept that for fueling from people as a max. Left now, uh, new course, two five, two four five. Are we floating yet? Uh, we are now. Feels flowing. And stop because I've lost contact. Fuel held. Guessing. Right, so will that remember that? No, I, I just just as we were doing this, um, I was just thinking. Actually, it doesn't. It will when you press start again. It will take the two thousand in the top box. It right. doesn't. It knows how much you've given. So I yeah. should maybe do a calculation and reset yeah. that. Shouldn't I? Is that something yeah, easy to do? Like a loop back, yeah, yeah. so it figures out that yeah. if you've done four and have to stop. It knows yeah. how much is left to do. Yeah. That would be good. Yeah, I've just realised that. Just as I said it, when I lost yeah. contact, I was thinking... So I clicked manual stop, and then I thought, ah, that's okay, so We'll go for 1,000 then, on the yep. recontact. 1,000 set, report contact. I mean, it's peanuts to me, that amount, that amount of fuel. Yeah, that's one of the problems I had. What's out there that's so little? But routinely, if you're doing this, this is the sort of thing we'll use for a trail. So I will be passing you 7,000 kilos. So I'll be passing you like 15, 16,000 pounds at a time per aircraft. So Contact, I think. Yep, point one, and uh, fuel is flowing. Yeah, it's the um, receiver's responsibility to report contact. Oh, okay. Just because even with the camera, I can't confirm that you're plugged in properly. You're the one who's right next to it with your head. And complete. Yeah, fuel complete. Disconnect and uh, remain astern, move to a stern center. Report uh, how much fuel you can take. Let's go for 5,000. Well, hello, we're going for a long one. Confirm 5,000. And uh, you are cleared contact, have you on the camera, report contact. Now your flow rate will be different because yeah. we don't normally take it from the centre. So yeah. my, my fuel rate will still be set to the wing hoodoos and you'll be right. delivering it at the fuselage right so back. yeah but i, but I but in, the, in the real it's aircraft they can they can send it at a, le a lesser rate surely uh, uh yeah i would think so yeah so i can simulate that by putting five thousand. does it take it from a different location where i refuel at the moment when you do the center line it's going to take it from the left tank so i've got to get some logic in there right so i'm just going to take it from the right tank then, as in right hdu Oh, okay. Sorry, I had a phone call. Did you report contact? No, I didn't. Okay, but good. I will, I will now, if that's okay. And uh, Roger, fuel's flowing. 100 seconds I've got. 
I know you're concentrating, so don't worry about PTT to talk back to me, but yeah, I don't know if you can, obviously you said you're going to put some logic in there, but the centre line one, I don't know, is, it, is there an option to somehow remove that? I mean, it doesn't matter where the tank's, where it's being removed, as long as it's being removed equally from wherever I dispatch. Yeah, it... At the moment, the left hoodoo takes it from the left wing tank, which is correct. The right one takes it from the right wing tank. Okay, the center. The center should take it from both equally. Right. So I've got to put a bit of logic. At the moment, it just takes it from the left. So I've got to put a bit of logic in there to split that flow. Realistically, I'm never going to fuel a fighter on my center line hose because it's not for that. Yeah, yeah. That That's designed... As a, so I won't worry about making the centre line able to do a lesser rate. Yeah, okay. I'll just leave it as it is then. So if I do have to put someone on the centre hose, if that's my only one left available for any reason, I can just take it out of one of the other tanks. Or I can take, I can put half the value in each of the tanks and press start on both. Yeah. Yeah. Does the same. Yeah. Just under a thousand to go. Yeah, roger. Obviously, it still depends when the gap is between us pressing, because uh, I've got you complete now. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. That, that'll complete. just be a delay in pressing. So. Complete now. Yep. Complete. Okay, disconnect. And are you happy to go reform? And uh, I'm going to RTB to Bryce unless you want to test more. I think we've tested every hose. And no, no, that's. We've discussed that's a couple of things that have come up whilst flying. So. Do you want to uh, escort me to Bryce? Or are you done? That's exactly what I wanted today. No, no, mate, I'll escort you back. Cool. We're going to route now direct to uh, Brecon VOR. Uh, so it's going to be a right turn heading 350. 350. And Madras 01 is off station. User will see out of your channel. Channel switched. Yeah, not bad. Not bad at all, mate. Very pleased with that. Yeah. And mine refueled nicely, including the uh, externals. I didn't do the center line, but it did the externals once the uh, internals were full. How um, do you do I the did... center line, sorry? Uh, the center line, you click the on the Typhoon one yeah. you've got three buttons you've got a left and right external in the center line external oh okay and you, you just click it to make sure it's green and then when it's full filled up the internals okay good filled yeah up, filled up the wing externals then it'll start on the center line right so i highlight if i've got externals on i've highlighted all of those green if i click to full will it calculate including the externals yeah. yes yeah but if i'm not wanting to fill externals or i haven't got externals on I need to work out deselect. rather than click to full. No, deselect them. Oh, just deselect them. Deselect them so they're not green, and then click to okay. full. Okay. Oh, okay. And cool. then it will go. And then it says, okay, you don't want the center lines. You don't want the externals filling. So this is. Oh, so it knows. Doing. So it doesn't even look for them. Yeah. Got you. No. TCAS off. <laughs> yeah. Just tell him it's reduced range the whole time. Yeah, that's quite good. I even, uh, when I was testing, I even um, jettisoned the tanks. Yeah. And the uh, fuel state went down correctly. And then when you did a two full um, and left the, deselected the three buttons, then it just uh, stopped. That's the other thing. If you say I want £5,000, yeah. And you only need three, it'll stop when it gets to when it's full. Right, okay, and then it realises and that's it, it quits the fuel, calls yeah, it complete, it just okay. stops. Yeah, just stops. And then it goes green complete. Okay, good. No, I like that. Um, yeah. It's a bit more realistic than that other gauge, isn't it? Yeah. That's more usable than the other gauge, friendly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So my route in here, it's uh, Brecon. I've got a top of descent in 20 miles, 
and uh, I'll be down to 2,800 over BZN, and then it's the outbound um, 26, sorry, 25, attack and arrival. Roger. Speed up now, 320. I'm going to speed up to the uh, calculated speed rather than my fueling speed. What, are we, what did we discuss? You're obviously you're going to put logic in so that the centre one takes from both equally. Yep, and I'm going to do when you click stop. Yeah. That it that it recalculates yeah. in the top box. Recalculates what's left, or just somehow can it read remaining and just put that figure in there, and then when you click start, yeah, yeah. it's already in there. Yeah, it can do. But I'll probably put it in the top box because it makes the logic easier. That's the yeah, that's what I mean. At the moment. That's the condition at the moment, so. Okay, we're going to start the set now. It's quite a shallow descent. Here. Uh, I wouldn't mind being on the other end of the test again. Yeah, exactly. I could, I could yeah. test the F-35. Yeah, 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 exactly. That'd be good. So I like that. I like the fact that if you don't click fill it, if you don't click the external, it won't include them in the uh, to full calculation. But if you do click them, it will. Is that both same in air, both aircraft? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Good little sorty. Shame there's not more people on. Yeah. That's good enough for tonight, though. Just to yeah. test it. Oh, hello. You're right there. Nice. When you're investing in track IR. Maybe Christmas, I don't know. No. Maybe. I've got a profile I can just send people now as well, with the dead zone set and stuff. That's all you need. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Les was struggling with it because he hadn't got a dead zone set, so it was detecting every movement. I've got a five degree dead zone around the center, wherever I... Because you, you, you center it, you press a calibrate button and center it where you want to be center. So center of your screen, if you look at that, center it, you've got five degrees movement on mine before it even yeah. does anything. Yeah. And then it's... It's not linear, it's semi-proportional, semi so the first sort of 10 degrees of me looking, it looks 30 degrees, sorry, 3 degrees per degree that I look, it looks on the screen, so it looks 3 times the amount, and then past that, I think it goes up to double that it looks, so I've got it worked out that I look at the edge of my screen, I'm looking at about 170 degrees behind me. Yeah. But if I just want to look around the cockpit, it's very. I don't have to move much at all. If you don't have that dead zone, you end up getting too much movement. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I bet. I bet he's also using the all the axes. I only use X and Y, as if I'm panning around. So I'm just using my head to pan more than anything. There's no point in having a Z. Um, what's the other one? There's another one. <laughs> Z, because there's there's one for up and down, there's one for left and right, as in movement, not not swivel, and there's one for forward and backwards. So you can you can move in a 3D environment in the cockpit, but it's not very suitable to this kind of sim because most aircraft, 
if you go too far forward, you'll actually you'll, you'll be outside the aircraft because it'll allow it. Whereas in something like yeah. DCS, it won't allow you to put your head out the window. You only need the X and Y pan planes anyway, really, that's what you need. I have got on the hat switch, I've got um, like a move button as well, so I can move left and right and forward and backwards if I if I need to in, a, in, as, in the same way as, uh, as track IR would do it, but I can control it a bit easier. to get on with this thing and just ignore the fact that I can't use the proper way of descending I've just got to watch the uh, descent bug myself and try and track it yeah it is a bit of a shame you fly the Aerosoft one as well don't you? Uh, I've got the, uh, the smaller yeah the baby yeah. ones nice. I, yeah they work properly the logic works a lot better Uh, so yeah, Bryce Takan um, is outbound 098 to 9.1 miles, uh, 2,800 to 6 miles, uh, past 6 miles, I'll be descending 2,300 and reducing, as I go over the top, 180 down to 160 for the turn onto the ILS 160 to establish. It's not a massively long approach at Bryce. No. You look at the Gatwick ones and stuff, like the minimum you're getting is about an 11 mile approach. Whereas here, you're 9.1 on the Takan, but the Takan's the other end of the airfield, so you're actually getting a seven-mile seven, yeah. seven mile approach, which is quite short, because that's at a normal airport, that'd be when you hit the glide slope. But I don't really know why, though, because it's not like you... The direction you're going outbound, you're not hitting any... What's that? Is that farm? But no, Benson. See, you're a while away from Benson. It's probably to avoid overflying Oxford because Oxford begins Could just be just outside yeah. the uh, outside the mats of Bryce. Because Kidlington, that's to the north, um, and all the approaches to two five, you go outbound south of the airfield on a teardrop. So you're never going to hit Kidlington. So yeah, it must be something to do with Oxford, maybe not overflying it. Hmm. You pretty much overfly, well, you almost overfly Whitney. It's within a mile to your right when you're on final approach, about five miles. I suppose it's not a city. Probably they've taken noise into account, probably as well. There you are. I'm just spinning around. What's your altitude, mate? Uh, 11, 11, yeah, just going through 11. Just start bringing the speed right down now, it'll take a while. The arrivals are quite a simple enterprise anyway, because you basically come direct from a uh, an airway fix. So Brecon, Honley, yeah. yeah. Mulby, Mimby, or what's the other one? Daventry. Direct to the Takan, and from the Takan it's teardrop. I think there is a precision approach. Well, yeah, there's precision approach, or a SRA approach. Yeah. 
or the NDBs, but they're all teardrops anyway. The NDB yeah, approaches are. are teardrops. Yeah, they're too. all very simple at price. Sound like one zero one nine currently. One zero one. Prize wins same as what I left two six zero eight knots. One zero one nine ten mile visibility temperature twenty one. Mm. Nice. Shallow in the descent to get this speed off now. A bit fast. Don't think I'm in controlled airspace there at the minute. So. Uh, no, you sh no, it's coming up. Your rise zone's coming up soon, I think. I haven't got it on my. No, we're a while away still. We're, what are we, what's that? 10 miles? We're about 8 miles from the Bryce Norton zone. But we'll be entering that anyways, arriving, so. Here, I think we're pretty much in our own free world. Yep. That's what you live in, isn't it? Um, Non-controlled airspace. Yeah, I spend a lot of time in non-controlled airspace. Don't is like it. it. Is, yeah. is it just a Unicom thing? How do you communicate? No, 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 no. You can listen to... There's various places provide you with what's called a LARS, a lower airspace radar service. Bryce is one of them, so you can be in open, the open class airspace, and you can be talking to Bryce, and they'll give you a radar service or a what's called a traffic service, the right side yep. controlled airspace. So you can ask for a traffic service, and if it's a shitty day, I don't like being outside controlled airspace with nothing. I need to. I need a traffic service, and Bry's giving me a traffic service pretty much all the oh, time. Nice. And I will just use that, and then I'll go back to Farnborough. Farnborough, I've got a north, south, east, and west frequency, huh. and you get you get the same thing. You get a traffic service. That's right. Yeah, bloody yeah, yeah, I, I like to do VFR. I like to do VFR on that thing. It yeah, adds yeah, another level to it. Well, VFR and stuff like that. So, traffic service. That. familiar with all them terms and what it means. Yeah, so essentially, uh, if it's a lovely day and I'm not really worried about anything, I just ask for a basic, and then there's no contract, I can do what I want really, but I do still tell, tell them. Yeah. I mean, a traffic service, you, there's still no... They're not going to give you instructions, they're going to give you information. No, they don't deconflict you. If you ask for a yeah. deconfliction, it's uh, it'd be bloody miles off your track, mate. Absolutely, yeah. miles. bloody pointless for a little airplane. Yeah, because they're going to put you five miles separation laterally or a thousand feet vertically. They can send you right. You know, if you were at uh, Bryce, you end up with a bloody Isle of Wight. When I was on, uh, when we were Vatsim, and I was with the RAF military thing on Vatsim, that was a pain in the ass because we were. Our SOPs was to get a deconfliction service whenever available. Useless. Which is a pain in the ass when you fly in a typhoon yeah. at 450 knots. Yeah, it is. So most of the time, I'd go low level and ask for uh, either a basic or only a traffic service. But you don't even need a traffic service really. I've got a no. fully functional air-to-air -air radar. So. Yeah, exactly. I, li I like a traffic service when I'm out and about. Right, off, 2,800 speed's going to start dropping back now, we're just dropping 2.30, it's going to be coming back to 1.80. I like to get slow early on these approaches because it's, it's not long and this thing don't like slowing down easily. So I don't know if you want to go from here and join the visual circuit. I'll, uh, well, I might follow you in and then I'll just overshoot and go uh, head for Connorsby. Okay.
do your minimums in one flight and just have to do a five minute. <laughs> yeah. Actually, yeah, I don't know, I think you, have you already done minimums? I've already done minimums. Yeah. Oh, right. To be honest, this month I'm a bit more happy. I've removed Tom from the roster and everything. Yeah, yeah. That was always going to happen. Kester's playing up. No, Is he still away? I haven't, got much. Much. I haven't got much time for him, so. I don't care if he drops off. Except at the minute, the end of the month. Because oh, you God. know what's going to happen when he comes yeah. back. What's going to go? Oh, can someone uh, let's do a flight and then it'll be like an hour before he gets everything set up. Oh, yeah. I didn't, oh I didn't that's the problem. Anything. Few and far between yeah. flights means that your sim isn't ready to go. Yeah. Like I could just jump on because I fly so often that any problems are long sorted out. Yeah, plus it's muscle memory. You know what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. I know. I can start my flights in about a minute flat because I'm, I'm ready to. I know what buttons. It's all set up, ready to just push and get on. Right turn heading. Uh, sorry, outbound course zero nine eight to six miles. We'll be descending down to two three hundred. After that, on the descent, we'll just. Uh, be reducing to 160 if you can manage that <laughs> after all that fuel <laughs> yeah i've got tons of fuel on board yeah say so you're not going to be struggling to get back <laughs> so uh, nine thousand pounds passed make a note of that in my pirate got nine thousand pounds past raises there for yeah. See, that's Whitney on the left now. You pretty much go out past these lakes. Yeah. Um, what's it? Is it a reservoir? What is it? I can't remember. It's oh, far I think more. It's a yeah, yeah, far it's more a reservoir. reservoir isn't it? Yeah, yeah. That's one of the pretty VMPs. much. That, that's almost the turn if you were using it VFR. That'll be your turning point for a seven mile final. And it's sort of, you can see where the road winds to the left from Whitney. You cut inside of that and come almost level with it and just skim Whitney. That's the A40. You probably know this because you've probably flown it. Yeah. Yeah, there's a couple of VRPs around there that they ask you to use. Yeah. Yeah, this is a far more reservoir, is actually a Bryce VRP. Yeah. According to my chart. Okay, descending 2300. Starting to slow down 160. found as well, I found it works out the V uh, the V app a bit too slow to be for me to be comfortable with. So I add five knots now. Routinely, yeah. regardless of what it tells. I just always find that even on the glide slope, full flaps gear down all set up, descending on the glide slope I'm still at an angle that I'm not comfortable with if I fly five knots slower. Yeah. Be a stall. Stand by. Left onto the low slide. Ooh, I'll break off here then. Get some burner back in. Oh, 300 feet. So give me a, uh, a fly pass before you depart. Oh my God. I was going to say I'm getting a bit. I'm getting a bit slow for you, surely. That was funny. 
black bars are establishing seven miles. Slowing to be at one three six. Glide slopes just come in. There it is. And all the localizer ten. Localizer and glide slope established visual on rise. Get out. See, look, I'm set up and I'm, I've only got 5.5 miles left, and this thing doesn't have a slow. Mm. I mean, 136 mm. isn't isn't a slow VAP. When you're looking at 10 knots slower in a, in a smaller bus. I just can't wait to have something that flies like the Aerosoft bus again, especially if it's an A330 as well. Yeah, that'd be nice. It just flies so much more crisp. Yeah. There's no slack in it, it just feels like there's no slack. Whereas this thing wallows a bit and then the wing effect. Just, yeah. I wouldn't say trash, but it's not user friendly. No, it's, no, it's not trash, but it's, uh, yeah, it's a bit. It's not brilliant. And what I don't get is the um, on the final approach, you, at about 50 foot, you lose. I know in the Airbus it dips its nose down, and you're supposed to, so you consciously have to hold it yeah. back. But this yeah. thing, it feels like when it does that, you have no control until you touch down. It almost free. 1, yeah, it almost you can't pull it back. Or it feels like it anyway. No, no authority. Two miles manual. She's manual. Always land manual anyway in this thing. Yeah. No reason not to, to be honest. Always try and come in one light too low as well. That way it sort of counteracts the fact that I'm having to flare early because I don't get much input later on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm flaring at 50 foot, and to me, that's too high to flare, even yeah. in this thing. 500. I mean, in real life, you'd want to be one dot above. You wouldn't want to be one one below. Yeah. Because that's uh, that's a failure. That that's an instant smack into the ground somewhere. Yeah. Hundred above. But I'm a dot above at the minute. That's it. Perfect. The problem is this thing though, I'm counteracting the Minimum fact that on the flare I lose control so I'm flaring Flight early slow. so it does dri uh, float Flight a little bit. Slow. Flight I'm slow. 2 and 2 at the minute though. Flight slow. 50, 40, 30, 20. Marvellous. That's uh, And I'm going to go just coming down your right hand side. Yeah, same. And it'll return it to uh, Coningsby. Section. See what the brakes are feeling like. Well, they're not too warm, that's fine. 90 degree, 100 degrees, that's fine. Take about 400 degrees before I start getting a problem. Enjoy your flight back, you'll probably be back before I've even shut down. Won't take you long, ten minute flight now. Yeah, it's uh yeah, nine minutes. <laughs> Plenty of fuel so you can go at point nine five. Whoops, I've just gone through the sound barrier. Whoops. <laughs> Wondered why all the glass had just fallen out on the floor everywhere. Not going Fairford, I don't think. Well, it's lovely to go, but it's it's start it's, it's too expensive, expensive now. Right? They're it putting people off. Expensive. Yeah. Because I remember yeah. when it used to be thirty quid a ticket, and now we're at fifty-five quid a ticket. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It's getting ridiculous. And all they're paying for is fuel. 
for the aircraft. Yeah, they're not paying. Uh, well, there's a there's a few appearance fees, but not that many these days. No. It's mainly all military. Oh yeah, the civil ones. But then, like the vendors that are there, the snack vendors yeah, and paying, stuff, they're paying ten grand a day for being just for fortune. being there. Paying a fortune, mate. I get it. It's all it's RAF charitable trust, isn't it? You'd think yeah. they'd give military a discount, but they don't. Which is strange to me. Yeah. If you're doing it as a RAF charitable, charitable trust, you'd thought RAF at least got a discount. Exactly. But, hey, hey. Right. That is me shut it down. Roger, mate. Thanks for that test. No worries. <laughs>